Well, this is our devotional for Tuesday, May 19th, and we're looking at Psalm 102. We'll look at the beginning and the end of the psalm. And I want you just to hear the honest cry of the heart of the psalmist as the psalm begins, but also at the end of the psalm, see where their heart has changed. So just listen to the change of heart that runs through this beautiful, powerful psalm. Psalm 102, beginning in verse 1. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me. When I call, answer me quickly. For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my distress, I groan aloud, and I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. You can feel the loneliness, can't you? I lie awake. I have become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long, my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. Man, man, this is a cry of pain and sorrow and loneliness. But listen to the end of the psalm, beginning in verse 25. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence and their descendants will be established before you. Now, what a change of heart. And think about where the change happened. I mean, the psalmist begins by saying, this is a hard time. I mean, my days are vanishing. It's like one day comes and it's gone and it's gone and it's gone. And actually, uh, I was just thinking as I was talking to Thomas, who's recording this right now and sitting right here with me, uh, that, man, we looked at the date and I'm like, it can't be that date, but man, the days are flying by. Sometimes the days just vanish like smoke. He says, my heart is withered. I'm emotionally, I'm lonely. This picture of, of a bird sitting on a roof by itself. You can see the gray sky in the background. This one lonely bird on a cold day just sitting there alone. You go, oh man, it's just so sorrowful. That's what the psalmist is saying they feel like. They say, my, I eat my meals in pain and sorrow if I even remember to eat. I mean, the psalmist is in a deep place of pain and struggle. You may be there right now. You might be feeling those kind of feelings. With, with all that we're walking through as a nation, all that's happening in our economy, all the tension in our world. You might say, man, I can relate with a psalmist. But notice as the psalm comes to a close, how things change. In verse 25, the attention turns, the psalmist turns from their own pain and their sorrow and their loss and their eyes turn to God. And everything changes. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth. The heavens are the work of your hands. All of a sudden, the psalmist's eyes turn upward to the God who made everything. And, and, and just... The psalmist declares, I know who my creator is. I know who made me. I know who made the world and who sustains it. It begins to breathe hope into their heart. Then there's the declaration, God, you remain forever. You're eternal. In this world where things kind of come and go and everything's changing so quickly, there's something to hold on to that's eternal, the God that we worship. And then there's hope even in this life. The psalmist says, you know, basically recognizes that our children's children's children can follow and love God. There's hope for the future even in hard times. As we pray together, I want to encourage you to, to if you're feeling down and discouraged, and maybe, maybe even feel like you're moving into depression or, or just emotionally down, that you would just keep turning your eyes to God. Remember who made you. Remember who made the heavens and the earth. Go outside, take a walk, that's allowed. And just breathe in the air of this world that God made. And look at his creation and his beauty. There's some people that are living out in the middle of a city somewhere that can't do that. But man, if you live in the Salinas area or in Monterey, there's beauty all over the place. Look around and notice that. And so let's pray and ask God to lift our hearts and fill our spirits. Oh God, many people right now are feeling discouraged and disheartened. Uh, they're dealing with uncertainty with their finances. There may be relational tensions. Uh, they, they may be losing their desire for food and just really down and struggling. Lord, wherever we are, I pray we would turn our eyes to you. We would recognize your presence and your glory and your beauty in the midst of this difficult time that we will know that you are on the throne forever and ever and that the generations to follow us until Jesus returns again will have the availability of your grace and your love and your presence if they'll just turn their eyes to you. 
Lord, bless us as we walk into this week and keep us close to your heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Pastor Ben Spangler is going to share something that's really extremely important with you, and I want to challenge you to listen to him and to consider doing the Shoreline survey uh, that we are introducing as a congregation. It will be so helpful for us and so valuable if you'll take the time to do that. Listen to Pastor Ben, and then right when you're done, if you haven't done it yet, take the survey. God bless you. We'll see you on Thursday. Hey, Shoreline. I'm excited and hopeful for what God has in store for us in the future. We as a pastoral team, as a leadership team, as a staff team have been praying about what are the right steps and what are the right ways, so the right things that we can do in order to open our church again, uh, in order to comply with all of the laws and also to honor one another, to help keep each other safe, uh, and to also help move Jesus's church forward to the best of our ability. Uh, we put together this survey. It takes about seven minutes to fill out and it's online. There's a link in this email or in the text message that came with the devotional. And once you've filled out that survey, uh, we will take all that information and we'll synthesize it together. And it will give us input as we continue to pray and look towards uh, what we can do and how soon we can open our church. So we love you all. We miss you. God bless you. And I hope uh, that you would take this time to fill out the survey. Thank you.